give a warm welcome for Freddie Murray. And that's where I sewed. 
And so I did that for about two and a half years. And um, I bought a book, and the book was called Quilts, Quilts, Quilts. And um, I made almost every quilt in that book. And um, I was getting kind of tired of trying to do a quarter and save, <laughs> trying to um, uh, cut off the point. So I took a class on the Little Red Schoolhouse. Now there's a schoolhouse quilt in the red and white exhibit, and um, my son took a picture of me with it. But I, that was my breakthrough. I took the class, and in that time, the classes in our area were set up where you went two hours for six weeks, or maybe it was three hours. And um, so I still didn't know a quarter and same, so I had to go on two images from everything. And so I went home and I made two red and white um, schoolhouses. And I was on the third one when it dawned on me that there were 12 of us in the class and we're all doing red and white. And this quilt had been made for 100 years or more. So I, what was the point? <laughs> so, I, I looked at my meager supply of, of fabric at that point, and I um, thought, okay, I like this pattern, and um, what I will do is I will make them in colors that would really annoy the neighbors. <laughs> so I did um, shocking pink, purple, lime green, orange, and I did about six of the houses. And so I went to class the next week, and I showed the, cl the class the two red and white. I was too um, bashful to show the color. So when everybody left, I showed them to the, um, the teacher, and she said, Freddie, these are sensational keep going. And I often thought, if she had said, burn them, don't show them anybody, I would not be sitting here speaking to you today. I think as new quilters, we are very vulnerable. And I try and remember that in every class I teach and also in every quilt store I go into, there's always someone that is buying the back for a quilt to the binding or and so I there's always something that you can say nicely about a quilt, even if you hate it. <laughs> and it makes that person feel really good and she will keep going. So um I went, I did the usual routine of, you know, what happens and blah, blah, blah. And um, in about 1918, I got very ill. And um, they called hospice. My boys came in and said goodbye. And, um, I fold them. Here I am. <laughs> so, so God wasn't finished with me yet. So um, in the back of my mind, I had taken a class from Rosalie Gates, if anybody had that pleasure. Anyway, she is a woman from South Africa, an um, English woman. 
And um, the class was called mainly Matisse. And so she taught, she never ever brought a sample. It was just when she came into the classroom in the morning, she would put an inspirational sentence on the whiteboard and then she would um, talk about um, design and color. And so um, I, in the back of my mind, I remembered looking through a big Matisse book and there were faces. And so I thought, well, faces, that's a good subject. So I, um, I started, and then as I say, I got very sick. And as I was recuperating, I promised that I would go to my studio every morning and make a face. And I'm doing that to this day. I am going to my studio and making a face. And it's interesting for me to see um, the freedom that my how my faces have evolved to. I try and teach every student to break the rules. When we learn those rules as beginning quilters, Nobody tells them that not forever rules. If you want to continue, you may, but it's far more fun to break the rules. And you know, I was in one class one time and this woman was just really agonizing over um, what we were supposed to be doing. And the teacher said to her, you know, this is not brain surgery. <laughs> and that stuck in my mind. This was fun. And we were doing this because it was fun. And so, I don't know. Um, I try never to make a face that looks like anyone I know. Sometimes <laughs> they do. Um, and I, because um, I remember what student was going to do Beyonce, and um, that was right after I said, try not to make these look like anybody know. And so um, she made it, and she was very disappointed. And I said, this is a really good face. The only reason you're disappointed is doesn't look like Beyonce. It doesn't have to. And so what I do mainly in my teaching is I give the student permission to break all the rules. And I love it when a student comes that has never taken a quilting class or a home ec or a sewn her own clothes. I love someone. Last week I had a woman that um, she didn't have a sewing machine. She reminded me of me when I started. And she was really good. She was really, really free. Just, and I, I warned her, I said, you know, you're going to take four classes people are going to try and set you right. I mean, this is not really the way to do things. This is a better way. And um, so I said, don't listen. Just do what you want to do. So um, the fun is just, um, I start by picking out a background. And then I cut a face shape. And then I usually start with my hair. And I have um, another little problem I have is 
actually degeneration. And so what I see and you see, I'm sure are very different, but it has allowed me still to be able to create. And I have a woman that comes, a friend that comes five mornings a week, and um, I don't drive anymore, thank my children, thank me, thank <laughs> And um, I, um, she cuts out shapes and hand her fabric, and I say, I'd like this cut and this cut, so I have a big box, a plastic box that has hair. Now, my idea of hair is certainly not your idea of hair, <laughs> but it could become your idea of hair. And um, then I have another box that Hara has eyes, nose, and mouth, cheeks, and um, earrings. So um, now, because everything is cut out, I can make a face quite quickly, too quickly, in fact, because now I'm starting to make two, two a day. And now this has been going on since, I think, 1918, so you can imagine the amount of, I have never, ever quilted a quilt. When I first took that first class, came home, and my daughter and I, daughter-in-law and I tried to, she was quilting and she was showing me how, and she said, you're not very good at that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that was the end of my attempt. So I will I check, and uh, I have two main quilters. One quilter does my big collages, or um, I no longer make um, piece quilts. I do all collage. Thank God for a glue stick. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Elmer. <laughs> I can't tell you. Um, so I send the big quilts to one quilter and then the faces to another quilter. Now, the quilter that does these, her name is Dee and and she lives in San Juan Capistrano, where the, um, yeah. and um, so she sits down, and she puts, she said she puts three faces on the long arm, and she does that um, matchstick clothing, which is, about an eighth of an inch apart. And then she takes off the um, big machine, takes it to her sewing machine, and then fills in all of the details. So um, actually, she makes me look really good. <laughs> we, um, we teach a class together every year in Santa Barbara. And I teach the, the fun part, and she teaches the quilting part. <laughs> she thinks that's fun, so to each his own. I, um, how many of you quilt your own quilts? Okay, not as many as I thought. Um, I just, um, that is one part that um, I do not regret learning. <laughs> um, along in my travels, the first book I wrote was Freddie's House. Did any of you see that book? Okay. And then I met Gwen Marston. And um, 
one of our students thought that we would enjoy each other. So she set up a luncheon for us to meet. And as Gwenny said, we we're already laughing going into lunch. So um, Gwenny lived on an island in Lake Michigan. And um, she would come to um, California for about two months every year. So what we did was she came to California and she spent a couple of days with me and then we made two quilts. And oh, we spent a lot of time admiring them and telling each other how smart we were. <laughs> and I think that's a very necessary part of the process. Keep telling yourself how smart you are and how good you are, because you are. And um, if you don't start that way, nobody else will. So it's really um, a joy to, um, you know, to have those well, So anyway, when and I started, well, she would come for two weeks and she would, we would, I would make um, half square triangles of black and white in my end, and she'd make them in her end. At one time, we had enough black and white that we put them on around this room to play. <laughs> and um, so she would come. She was the designer, and her inspiration were um, antique quilts. And it might just be little tiny um, side of a quilt that inspired her. And she would say, okay, this is what we're doing. And I would say, okay, because I was the colorist. And so I would select the fabric. And um, one time we were doing one, and I said, okay, how about this? And she said, well, that's great. I have to lay down for a while. She just couldn't wrap her at first. She was really um, very wary of what I came up with. You know, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, you know, ignorance is bliss because I really didn't know all of these things that she was telling me. So we, um, we made the first quilts, and she said, well, what are we going to do with these? And I said, well, we're going to make more. <laughs> so at that time, we had about a dozen. And um, it just so happened that a friend of mine called, and she said, we want to do a, a Freddy book. And uh, I said, how about? to a Freddie and Gwenny book. So she um, came over and um, we showed her the work we were doing and she was delighted. So that's how those books were born. They were really <laughs> fun to do and I think they gave um, a lot of people a lot of permission to break all of those rules. So anyway, here I am. Um, in Gwenny's last days, I was sick. She was sick, so she said to her friend, we're Thelma and Louise. <laughs> so I sent her a Thelma face, and I was so glad she really enjoyed it, and I miss her to this day. But that's part of life. Part of life when you get to my age is missing people. But the quilts just restore that creative juice that you have, that this need to create. So um, I think, um, are there any questions? Wow, yes. 
when I saw you on TV uh, in a quilt show and you said that your neutral color was red. Is it still? Red is a neutral. Don't ever forget that. <laughs> They're going to try and tell you it's beige. <laughs> I'm here to tell you it isn't. It's, um, there is not one color that red does make look better. Uh, so, are your stairs still red? The stairs in your house were red. No, the stairs in my house are green with a black and white checkerboard for us oh, and stars. And um, I still um, I live in the I live in the house. Now I live by myself. And um, at first it was hard to get uh, used to living alone, but I've accommodated very nicely. <laughs> and um, my boys are all around. They live, three of them live in my same little town. And um, when comes on Sunday, when comes on Tuesday, when comes on Thursday, and I have grand, I have 13 grandchildren, eight girls, yay. <laughs> five boys, and I have four great grandchildren, all boys. <laughs> so I think we're on that road again. But, <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, I have taught all of the girls to quilt. When they're in grammar school, they love it. The minute they hit high school, it's like, yeah. and college. I think that when um, all the dust settles, that they will go back, they will remember that I taught them, and they will go back to quilting. So, questions? Wow. Oh, come on. I know you have questions. I have done a good job. <laughs> you have it. I've got to be here for another half an hour. <laughs> yes. What kind of artwork did you do before you started quilting? There's one. What kind of artwork did I do before I was quilting? I started out as a potter. And when I had children, a pot does not wait for measles, mumps, or chicken. <laughs> but needs to be taken care of. It needs to be taken care of. So that didn't work. And then I found I was good at kid art. I could build any fort with popsicle sticks. And I was great at the California missions with sugar cubes. <laughs> that was about the extent of my, and I would go, the kids, the boys would invite me, um, have their teacher, teacher invite me to their home ec um, project. <laughs> and um, I remember when the Cuisinart first came out, and I went to class with we thought they were just amazed. I also taught quilt making to second and third graders. Mm -hmm. And that was an experience. Mm -hmm. The boys always wanted to take the machine apart <laughs> or also see how fast it could go. <laughs> so, um, that didn't bother me for a minute. I was used to that. So, um, yeah, so I've done lots of different things with the quilting, and um, I'm still um, teaching, teaching locally, and I'm still uh, lecturing. So I feel very gratified <coughs> people would hire someone who's 92 years old. <laughs> Okay, questions. Yes. Do you know how many faces you've made? Uh, I shudder to think. <laughs> Must be a thousand. Uh, wow. Yeah. I don't have them all at one place. I was going to 
was going to ask what you do with them. Well, fortunately, my quilter, what happens is I finish gluing the face and I send it off to my quilter and I say, Jean, if anything falls off, put it where you think it should <laughs> Yes. Have you done any man faces? Yes. Why? Um, I did. I have a splendid one of uh, Mr. French Fry. <laughs> oh, no, that's Trump. <laughs> replaced. 
So as I'm designing, I am putting my first impressions on that background, but I know that I can take it off at any time. So it's very forgiving. It's not like um, people would say, well, why don't you use Wonder Under or, you know, and I would say, because then it's static. Then it also, if you cut out a piece with a backing, it's stiff. When I have a piece that's cut out, it's still very pliable. And uh, I like that look. So, um, yeah. Other questions for Freddie? I have a question. Yes. And then June. Your faces have so much expression to them. Do you think that reflects your mood that day? Do you do you pick out a happy face or a sad face? Uh, you know. That's a really great question. I don't know where those ideas come from. Um, I have never made two faces the same. And um, I think that I subconsciously get ideas of faces. Eyes are a big thing. Um, hair is a big thing. What they're wearing is a big thing. And um, the other thing is, you know, I've always said 10 fabrics don't work, but 100 do. <laughs> so I try and get as much color into that one area that I can without having it cluttered. And I always tell my students, the hardest part of making a quilt is getting started. The second hardest part is knowing when it's finished. We tend to have this nice creation and then screw it up by putting bugs and uh, butterflies. And so keep it simple, as simple as you can. And um, and when you finish it, when you think you've finished it, you are. I have to tell you how much I've enjoyed being here and meeting people. This is really the first time I've been to the Midwest. I teach, I've taught on both coasts, and um, I just, um, I find the people kind and friendly. And um, I, the only other time I was in the Midwest was, um, I've been to Chicago a couple of times. So I don't know if you consider that Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, so anyway, any more questions? Okay, well, I thank you for having me, and um, 